Welcome to Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be ready for kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, who is transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level by the third grade. With me today in the studio is Cami DeMario. Cami is a published children's author and illustrator right here from Vero Beach. <laughs> Cami, I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Thank you. It's such a pleasure and honor to be here. This is such a treat because of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative. We believe so much in reading and reading to children. Sure. So to have a published children's author here in the <laughs> studio today is very significant for us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cami, talk to us a little bit about your journey in becoming an author? Well, we go back a long time. <laughs> I guess my passion with uh, writing and most of all illustrating is started when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I was a young girl, probably four or five years old, and drawing was my passion. And I remember my mom signed me up for every little contest, the drawing contest, and <laughs> I was always there ready. And the fact, most of all, that I like to create cartoon characters. So behind the drawing, there was also a storytelling. And, you know, I grew up and of course, and then you take different roads. And when I was about 10 years ago, then I moved to first to the United States, because I'm from Italy originally. Mm -hmm. And with my family, we moved for a few years to the Bahamas, a small island of the Bahamas. And that was that environment that actually had my creativity mm. flourished again. Wow. And that's why I started to write as a career and, and publish books and create characters. And that's when my first book and create stories was, for children. For that children. It, was, it yes. seemed like it was a magical time for you. It was. It was. And uh, so it was It was very exciting because, you know, I always say I'm, I'm still a child myself within. And I, that's what I can do best. <laughs> it's like write for children. And most of all, illustration, as I said, it's my main passion. And I'm very, very grateful and to, to be able to, to do that. Cami, and is there a book that you remember for your, from your own childhood that maybe inspired you and helped a little bit with that journey? Yes, well, more than a book, I have my mentor, mm -hmm. Walt Disney. No, okay, yes. <laughs> yes he's my mentor. And uh, as a matter of fact, my mom, when I was a young girl, he, she signed me up with a little Mickey Mouse magazine that they would come every, every weekly or, or monthly, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. So I was always into those. And Walt Disney was my 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 mentor so any movie or characters from from Walt Disney it was uh, it was what really brought all my future and uh, you know creativity from him even the way that I illustrate my book because yeah. Like these days, everybody, you know, like technology, computer, I'm still the old school. I draw with my paper and pencil by hand. Then, of course, I use the scanner and then I color digitally. But I really love to do things in, like the old school, like the animation and, you know, that you can see in the old Walt Disney documentary and stuff like that. So <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and what about the location and the inspiration for your books? You talked about the Bahamas being yes. sort of a, an inspiration exactly. for your book. So, and you live now here in Vero Beach. Yes. Yes. Which is sort of an island par paradise. Exactly. So the ocean follows me all over. Well, that's when my first character came to life. When I lived there, and I, one day I remember I was with my children, my youngest one, and I, we were down at the beach, and uh, myself, a little girl from Milan, a city from Italy, and uh, all of a sudden I see this huge starfish 
on the bottom of the ocean. Red starfish, and it was just beautiful. I was like, in shock. I said, wow, I've never seen anything like that. And that's when that night, happy, the red starfish came to life. I went back home, and I started thinking about the starfish. And I did a little research, and I learned about the starfish. They have little feet underneath. They walk around the bottom of the ocean. They eat everything. To, they clean up. They call them the vacuum cleaner of the ocean. So I said, okay, so happy is a starfish that travels around the world and wants to meet new friends because sometimes life on a small island can become a little boring. Mm. And let's see, maybe he wants to travel, meet new friends. And so this message of friendship and uh, diversity, different cultures, and that's how the, the world of happy came to life. And even, um, I, and I read the world of happy in preparation <laughs> for this interview, but also you have an environmental conservation theme. Yes, because yes. Happy, happy really happy, seeks to take care of the environment and yes, the ocean. the ocean, clean the ocean, so get rid of all the plastic and the pollution in the ocean to protect the species and marine life. So those are books and messages that Happy wants to bring, bring out to the world the word and teach the children so you actually have a copy of the world of happy and I i'm going to ask you if you could bring it up and maybe just read the first if you could just give us that gift of reading <laughs> a page from the world of happy sure. for us yes this is the world of happy let's all be friends this is my first book and i can just read a little bit the first few pages it is a sunny day and happy the red sister is lying under a palm tree on the tropical island where he lives in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Hello, happy. You don't look too happy today, I should say, says Floppy the seagull. Hello, Floppy. I'm bored. There is nothing to do here and nobody to play with. Happy answers. I wish I could have wings like you and fly away to meet new friends. You forget you have little feet that can take you anywhere you want to go. You can discover a new world out there. It will take too long for me to get anywhere, Happy says. Not if you sail the ocean. I know where you can find a boat. Follow me to the blue cave. That's that's <laughs> that's beautiful. And we don't so, want to give the story away. <laughs> to folks but um i've introduced floppy which is actually yes. happy best friend is a seagull and he, that's why he travels all over the world so happy so fascinated when he comes back he tells all the stories that he sees and because he can fly so he can get fast everywhere that's why happy you know he said i'm bored you can fly everywhere he said you have little feet yes will be too slow for me to walk around. It seems that Floppy could be that character that's the cheerleader in the story. He's, he's the wise guy, mm -hmm. you know, the old wise guy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Happy is like a, the passionate and very, you know, like a, he wants to do a lot of things and maybe Floppy's the one that, you know, give him a little bit of calms him down, but he, he's the wise one. And... Uh, there's going to be many other characters that come along, all starfish in every story. We have a lot of different characters, different starfish. They come from all over the world. And then there is another character, Bella, that comes into the picture, which is happy friend. And, and they, actually the one that they will travel together all over the world will be happy, Bella and Floppy on a sailboat. <laughs> so hopefully we gave our listeners and our viewers a taste of the world of happy and they're intrigued and <laughs> they consider the world of happy as a gift to a child or to an adult, to anyone sure. in their life. Now, I want to ask you about your second book, um, because we were talking about your second book a little bit before we went on the air and I found that particular theme in the story. Very interesting. Can you share with us a little bit about it? And you can certainly show the cover as well. Sure. This is the second one. It's the little pot cakes. Little pot cakes. <laughs> well, these are dogs. And uh, same. The Bahamas really gave me all the creativity to write stories. Little The pot cakes is actually a Bahamian breed of dogs. And they're straight dogs. 
and the name pot cakes because Bahamian women, they would cook in a pot, like pizza rice, their Bahamian food, and it will form a crust, as they call the cake, at the bottom of the pot. And that would be the food they will give to the, to the dog outside, and they will feed the dogs. So that's why the pot cake's name comes from. Mm. And I've seen so many pot cakes uh, roaming around the, the island. And uh, one day, actually, I met these great women They're from Atlanta, Georgia. They would come down to, to the island and uh, rescue the dogs and bring them back to the States to find them forever homes. So I was very fascinated and very you know, grateful for these women to really save the lives of these dogs. And so there we go. The story came out, the little pot cakes. And there is a message of friendship, actually, a little girl that goes on vacation to the island with her, her family. She's a disabled girl. She's on a wheelchair because mm-hmm. of an accident. So she can't really, she sees all the children in the water playing, and she feels sad because she can't really... You know, she feel like she can't really do as much as the other kids would do. And so there is the story the mother finds the puppies at the dump. Because uh, amazingly, all this pregnant female, they will go to the dump and give birth. Mm. So you would just go throw your garbage and f- hearing puppies crying underneath, you know, like boxes and stuff because... This is the reality. The the dogs, they're just left the little puppies there. And that's why the mother saves the puppies. And that is the story. They go back, come back to the States, and then they will be placed for adoption. So all this message. I like to send these messages in my books uh, as far uh, about friendship, about caring about each other, and uh, lots of uh, great causes. And that's important for children to hear. So when you have a book like that, that has such beautiful illustrations, but also that core message, message. that's really a gift, Cami. We're going to take a break to hear from our sponsors, and we will be right back. the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, our vision is for every parent, regardless of income or zip code, to have the knowledge and tools they need to raise healthy children that are prepared for kindergarten. Our mission is to support our partners in developing a high-quality early childhood system that is family-centered. Our outreach and parent engagement specialists connect with families and build trusted relationships. KRC has chosen Felsmere and Gifford as our two focus areas in Indian River County. Our Felsmere office is located downtown in the city annex, and our new Gifford office is located within Victory Park Apartments. Our administrative offices are now located adjacent to Healthy Start and Treasure Coast Community Health in Vero Beach. The Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, developing a high quality early childhood system for all children in Indian River County. The Cataract Institute at New Vision Eye Center offers the most advanced technology available for patients with cataracts. Gentle, bladeless, computer-guided cataract removal. Our advanced laser system is designed to deliver the best visual results with unsurpassed accuracy and efficiency. No two eyes are the same, not even yours. That's why we use the Varian image-guided system to obtain a fingerprint of your eye before your cataract procedure. Doctors Minotti and Tate offer the safest and most efficient technique for cataract removal and permanent intraocular lens implant. Patients are personally counseled on the best approach for their needs and lifestyle. There are multifocal lenses that allow for distance vision and reading or toric lenses to correct astigmatism. Call New Vision Eye Center for a consultation or second opinion. Your eyesight deserves world-class eye care. Visit newvisioneyecenter.com or call 772-257-8700. That's New Vision Eye Center in Vero Beach. 
Looking for a change? How about Renaissance? Visit Renaissance Senior Living and see what La Vida Bella means in Vero. Convenient to downtown and Miracle Mile at 2100 10th Avenue, US 1. Offering 36 apartments for assisted living residents to live the good life close to everything in Vero. We have 24 apartments for memory care residents, a secure and safe space for those living with dementia and Alzheimer's issues. Stay connected to your loved one's lives and find new friends to share your life with. RenaissanceVeroBeach.com to find out more. Are you talking about having your own radio or TV program? Then you should talk to Planet Vero. Here's why we're the best. Your show will be heard on three local iHeartMedia stations, plus worldwide on the iHeartMedia network. And you can choose our live stream option, which gives you six cameras and professional television studio quality production that's delivered to many social media platforms. Call us for a free, no obligation on-air interview, and we'll show you the power of Planet Vero, radio, and TV. That's 772-778-2832. Follow the powerful Rush Limbaugh Show on Planet Vero Radio. Take advantage of the amazing opportunities on social media like Facebook and YouTube with a live stream broadcast. Call 772-778-2832. It's the future of marketing. It's Planet Vero, and it's brought to you by Idea Garden Advertising. Visit planetvero.com. We're back to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of KRC. And with me today in the studio is Cami DeMario. Cami is a published children's author and illustrator who lives right here in Vero Beach. Cami, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Cami, let's talk about your most recent book. Yes. This is a wonderful project. Every project, it, it's wonderful for me. You know, it comes from my heart. But this one has a specific, uh, you know, side of it. Uh, it just happened quick. Like uh, last month, a couple of months ago, I had this vision and I had this message coming through. And I sat down on my desk and 15 minutes I had a manuscript done. Wow. <laughs> I know. Wow. I was surprised. I said, wow. this is not me. It just came out from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so the manuscript was done and then uh, the fun part started, the illustration. But this had a very special message. Uh, and um, I was trying to put it down in a way they wouldn't offend anybody. It was just something uh, because it talks about a connection with the spiritual world, mm -hmm. God, and a higher being, however, yeah. higher being, mm -hmm. however you want to call it. So it's a very sensitive mm -hmm. uh, subject. But it was more like uh, giving children uh, something to to think about in in difficult circumstances, mm. to give them hope, oh. to say you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So you can go through struggle today, but don't worry. There is something out there that cares about you, and it's not just around you, it's within our, yourself, and then you can find that strength and courage to overcome any obstacle that life throws to you. What, what an uplifting <laughs> message, and I like the way that you've described it. You've taken such care in describing it so that our listeners and our viewers understand that this is a non-denominational non message at all but that yes. your goal is really to create that power that children have or the reader within yes. to believe the, in their themselves yes to exactly. uplift themselves so yes. in spite of the challenges that they might have exactly. they're able to overcome that yes and they can look around uh, in everyday life and knowing that they can come across any situation and the message of hope and courage is there too. Is there outside and within yourself, themselves. So I try to illustrate it in a in a nice, cute, funny way using animals and children and make it very light and but at the same time powerful. The illustrations are absolutely <laughs> stunning. Thank They're you. beautiful. You have a talent as a writer and as an illustrator. And to combine those two things, I find, is powerful. But I do want you to share with our audience 
why this project is so special because I know you're connecting it to a local nonprofit. Yes, because uh, mostly every book that I write has to have a connection with something that is actually happening, a cause that it's real. So I was able to to learn because I'm 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 new to here. I've been here only two years, but I was able to learn about the Little Bird the Angels mm -hmm. uh, charity. And when this book came to life, I said, I think it's perfect. <laughs> there was a reason why, and I connected to 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 the founder to Angel, and I told her what I was doing and what my thought was about supporting them and that's what I said uh, I'm gonna write this book this book will be published and will support your causes so half half of the proceeds will go to help her with her cause and um, so I already launched the digital version because I didn't want to wait until the physical book which will be a hardcover book and I want this book to look perfect and beautiful so hardcover beautiful and um, so the digital is out. It's been out for a couple of weeks now, and now the the hardcover should be ready soon. And uh, once the hardcover is available, then I'm planning to to have a an event and, and launch the book. And it, everything is in like the vision is there, and then well, I will try to to make it happen in a way that will benefit everyone. Uh, Cami, this is such a beautiful project, you know, to write this book and to connect it to um, the mission that Little yes. Birthday Angels has. And Angel Peach was here several weeks ago. We yes, had her I saw the video. on the air mm -hmm. and she talked very passionately about yes. that and making sure that homeless children had and a I'm, special way to celebrate. I'm very birthday. passionate for that cause, particularly myself. So <laughs> that's why it will, it will be, I, I know it will be a great match. Well, thank you for that. So, Cami, how can people find more information about your books? Well, through my website, which is camidemarioauthorillustrator.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm a social media butterfly. <laughs> so I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, Twitter, everywhere. And um, Amazon, uh, where you can find all my books so you can just plug my name either on Amazon or Google and then everything will come will come up and they can you know go through all the books and learn a little bit more about myself so if people want to purchase the world of happy they can go online, on, online yes. Amazon. yeah I think Amazon has I think Barnes & Noble online sure I think they have them too or other book online you know like a, a companies I think and yeah. Well, and the, the, what we really want to promote here is the fact that you're a local published children's author and illustrator. And there's a lot of power to that. We want to make sure that we celebrate that, <laughs> that Thank we you. get these books in the hands of local children, sure. that they're able to connect with that theme of friendship and the environment that you're yes. celebrating different through your culture, books, different cultures. Embrace diversity. It's, Absolutely. it's all there. It's Ab all there. Absolutely. And one of the things that we always want to do is make sure that children develop a love for reading and for books. Yes. And that's why I love your illustrations so much because they're so bright and colorful. That's it's, me. <laughs> it's so lively. It's so appealing. I think colors, are because, you know, we, we my books cater to a certain age, you know, let's see, from the three up to seven, eight years old, that colors are important, that children gravitate to the brightness and colorful of the illustration. That's why it's, it's important. I think that just makes a difference because it makes the book so catchy, mm -hmm. so attractive. It's something that you definitely want to read and you want to grab. So I want to thank you again, Cami, oh, for thank joining you. us today. Thank you for having me. We're going to make sure that we keep getting the message out and that people discover Wonderful. the world of happy. I know that a new edition will come out Yes. Sometime this summer. The big world, project with big happy. Big project with the world of happy. So we'll celebrate that as well. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving children and adults of all ages the gift of reading. Thank you, Cami. Thank you for having me. And until next time, this has been Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn.